In Atlanta, two NFL draft prospects prepare for the 2020 NFL Combine. Michael Pickney, a linebacker from the University of Miami. Hands it off into the boundary. McClee stopped up for a loss of one on the play. That's Michael Pickney. Cunningham. And a big time hit by Michael Pickney. Trying to scamper away and he can't. Pickney caught him. And Hakeem Adeniji, a left tackle from Kansas. First third down conversion. Stanley, down the middle, finds his man, a 14 yard line. Candler, number 35, watch for him. Out of the tight end here, Herbert. Both prospects will educate themselves on what's to come in the Combine. have a couple of NFL draft prospects that are getting ready for the NFL Combine. Offensive tackle out of Kansas, Hakeem Adeniji is joining us, as well as from the U, Michael Pickney, uh, linebacker. You guys are being represented by Derek Gilmore with Day One Sports uh, in Entertainment. Michael, tell me a little bit about uh, what made you guys decide to go uh, with Derek. What uh, what was that process like? Uh, Derek was, uh, he's real consistent, man. You know, um, Derek's been pursuing me and my family for a long time, and um I got nothing but love from Derek. I got nothing but great feedback from Derek. Um, so he's like, I look at him at like like one of my parents, you know, so, you know, in a way I call him unk every now and then, you know, he, he's like an uncle. Derek Gilmore is an NFL agent that founded Day One Sports and Entertainment, an agency that represents both Pinckney and Adenogy. Some of his biggest clients include Mike Evans of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and Super Bowl champion Mitchell Schwartz of the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, just his, his authenticity, uh, his persistence, and then his resume. You know, I, I joke with my, my girlfriend, like, Derek's the only person that responds to me faster than her. Like, I'll text Derek, and before I even finish writing the text, he's calling me. I'm like, dang. And then, you know, just, you yeah, know. Yeah, but he probably doesn't cook you as good a meal as what your girlfriend does, though, right? Nah. <laughs> well, combine's fascinating. I mean, yeah. it's you know, it's it's become two guys. I mean, let's face it, it's become a show. You know, it's a chance yeah. for you guys to really showcase physically what you are. I mean, not just you know from a football perspective, like we talked about. You guys looking forward to all that kind of you know showing up for the cameras and being a part of all that. As a competitor, it's gonna be fun. Just to you know, even though it's not football, just to you know, I'm gonna try and be first in like everything. Mm -hmm. Prospects will go through a series of workshops to help prepare for the NFL Combine. Former players, scouts, and general managers will break down film and conduct mock interviews. I got drafted by the Panthers. Played for Tell Dan Gettle on the field. What round you got to? Fourth round. That led to a job at the Cleveland Browns in the player personnel department. I was in scouting, college scouting, and draft prep. And I uh, was with the Browns from 2002 to 2010. Business professionals give advice on managing income and dealing with the media. We're gonna just go through the combine books and we can, uh, we prepare some books for you to kind of help you in the process and we'll talk to you a little bit about that. And then in between. Man, you know, shout out to my, uh, you know, my management, you know, Day One Sports. They did a great job of just bringing a bunch of guys in, you know, helping us out, you know, with a little things that I never even knew that went into, you know, the combine process. And um, I feel like, you know, I came out of the day better. The media will support you, the media will 
twist stories in your favor. Um, they like you. Every single media person you meet, yeah. you hear the media talk about guys all the time. Yeah. Like right now, Antonio Brown is a mess. Yeah. But he dogged a lot of media. Yeah. To get into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, guess who votes for you? The media. Yeah. But why don't guys think about that at the beginning? So that's one thing I teach guys is like the media use them to your advantage. Yeah. And they want to be running up to you after every game because you're the best interview. Yeah, and remain a resident of the state of Florida so this way you don't have to deal with the home state tax. The federal government will no longer allow you to take deductions for training, vitamins, and things of that nature, but some localities will and will deduct those costs that we told you to hold the receipts for. So let's say if I, if I had a wife and she didn't pay her taxes, does that like affect me too? Or just hey, mate. So you want to take this to the combine. Every team is in here. Mm -hmm. And then you also have the offensive schemes, defensive schemes in here, everything, but this is, you know, that they ran last year. Yes. But this is updated. So, for example, Garrett went to the Giants. So he, I mean, this is updated to it's where it's the offensive thing, scheme like, that you know? he ran yeah. at Dallas. You so for instance, you go into the meeting and you you'll know. Okay, I got me with the Giants. So the first thing I would do is I would look at it. You ever you know who Joe Judge is? I most people know who the hell Joe Judge is. You know what I mean? I would say the GM and the head coach. Those two people you want to mostly the head coach, head coach number one and GM number two. Make sure you're making eye contact with them, even though there's going to be a ton of people in the room. I think it was good to get like a good run through of you know the process and how things are going on and, and certain questions to get asked that might not have thought of before and, and getting prepared and then also you know stuff that's going to be important like the financials and the taxes throughout my career and after. As the prospects continue to gather valuable information, the best way to prepare for the combine is to up the intensity. Tell me, how old were you when you started playing football? As young as I can remember. Um, flag football was three or four. How would you describe your work ethic? My work ethic, mm -hmm. second from none. What kind of leader are you? I'm um, whatever leader you need me to be. Um, it's been years when I've been a vocal leader. It's been years when I've been a, a guy that just, you know, sat back and, and did my job and made sure my shit was right before yeah. anything. This is just, this is just a real strength I have. Uh, I would say a strength that I have is my, my consistency, you know, as a person and a football player. Are you going to do everything at the combine? Yes, I plan to. What are you going to run? Uh, what do you think I'm going to run? I'm asking you. What do you think I'm around? I'm around I'm, I'm, I'm a shot to people that come out. I thought another excellent thing that you did was when I asked you your goals, right? Your first goal was to win a Super Bowl. You know what I mean? It was a team oriented goal, right? It wasn't. Now, you did have individual goals, which are fine. But I, I think having that team goal first, yeah. that's important. You know, that's what, that's what they want to hear. I understand what you're saying about coming in somewhere and having like a mentor to learn from. But I, I would just be careful about, uh, and then you kind of cleaned it up, saying, like, I think you got to be like, hey, like, I'm ready to come in and contribute right, yeah. right away. Like, I'm not, I don't, you know, while I'm contributing and helping, I'm also, you know, I'm also going to be learning from guys. At the Combine, sometimes interviews aren't conducted by just one person, but by the majority of a team's coaching staff in what is called the War Room. Why do you play football? Ever since I was a little kid, you know, five, six years old, watching, watching the NFL on TV, I just knew this is what I want to do. Like that's my, that's my passion. What is your game like? Physical, you know, tenacious. So if I put that tape on over there and I show a guy run up in your mouth, would that be, would that be physical or would that not be physical? You're not gonna put that tape on and see a guy run up in my mouth. I wouldn't. There's no tape or no, but you catching a block and the guy getting up underneath you and jarring your head. No, but that tape don't exist. I think I can find that tape if you want to watch it. What do you wish your coach had taught you? Well, I wish he had taught me. Yeah, Miles. As far as like football. Anything. What do you wish he had taught you? That's a good question. I'm. I'm actually not sure. There's nothing that I could think of that that's held me back that would make me say there's something I wish he had taught me. So you know everything? I don't know everything. So there's nothing he could have taught you? But I don't know what I don't know. It's not his ability that's in question. Right, nothing and at it, all. And it's not that he's dumb, because can, you can tell by just talking to him, he's not, he doesn't lack intellectual capacity. 
but you're not a dog. Right. You don't play like a dude that's like, wait, the fuck? Like you, like you got, you got to come across like, I need to run him out of there. I want to get this dude fired. Every single week, it's my job to get the dude I play against fired. They want to cut him after he plays against me. Out of everybody that talked to me, the most impact I'll probably say is uh, Ray Farmer, probably because he gave like a direct perspective since he's been a GM before and, and sort of the things that they ask and they look for. And I feel like that's really helpful. And I'm gonna go back and, and work on those things and getting prepared for the combine. Are you a partier? No, sir. Have you been a partier? Yes, sir. Okay. Talk to me about that part of your life. Uh, so that part of my life was early on in my college career. Um, I was considered a party. I don't consider myself a party. I mean, you know, um, in my opinion, I'm not really a party guy. You know, I just feel like I got a personality about me and I got like a, you know, I'm not, I'm not a, just a, a quiet guy, you know. I know how to, you know, be, have fun and, you know, but it's a necessary thing. I don't get in trouble or nothing like that. I just, you know, I know how to have a good time. You're a team, you, you can tell yourself a team first guy? I am. So do you feel like everything, what, you wouldn't do anything to be selfish? No. Just realize the setup is coming, dog. Yeah. I hear it, I hear okay, it. I want to give you that heads up, it's coming. Yeah. Let's watch this plane right here. You know they got you. So you get knocked off the ball, first of all. I'm going to rewind it in a second. You get knocked off the ball. Uh-oh, he know now. He right there, boom, you step on this guy. That's a, This is why you lose games, because you give people give them away. No, here's the thing. You didn't really cost it because you didn't get caught, mm -hmm. right? So, but you got to realize, I got called after that the next day in meetings. I had to apologize to my group, my dudes. Like, I know I was wrong. Like, I knew it when I did it. Now, why I did it, I don't know. I think dude before I made the play before or something, but I don't even remember. But it was stupid. I shouldn't have done it. I could have cost my team. I could have cost myself. That's not indicative of who I am. I got caught up in the moment, and yeah, that, like, that was stupid. Just all them guys in the room, just giving me a little feedback on how to say words and how to break down sentences. It's not about what you say, it's how you say it. And just breaking it down and, and not putting yourself and in, falling into traps that they'll put you in. As combine training begins to wrap up, Adeniji, who is of Nigerian descent, gets some words of encouragement from the Nigerian-born Christian Okoye. So, who's cool? Who's cool? Did you go to? Why are you going to? I went to uh, Kansas. Oh, okay. Um, oh shoot, that's a quite like my Yeah. So how you doing? How you feeling? I'm good. Yeah. I'm good taking it all in. Are you ready for this next step? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This yeah. is what I dreamed of. Okay, man. Uh -huh. You only have those walls, right? For real. You only have those walls, that's but true. no no reserves, right? And that's facts. That's facts. <laughs> you gotta make the most of it. I'm well, good, man. It's exciting. I wish you good luck, man. I wish you luck. I appreciate that. A little tunnel screen. Nowhere to go. Cam Akers bottled up. Take off again. He'll get a first down. After a long weekend of combine workshops, both Adenogy and Pinckney are ready for the next step. Why should I be starting off as a lineman in the NFL? Because I have all the ability, my mindset's different, and I'm ready to go. This is, this, is my, this is what I've dreamed of, this is my passion. I'm gonna give everything I have, and you know, I'm, I kind of speak to this when talking, but I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give everything I have. I'm gonna be great, I know I will. Why do I deserve to be a linebacker in the NFL? I mean, yeah, I mean, you gotta just go watch the tape, man. You know, if I feel like you put on my tape, you feel like he should be in the NFL, he should play on Sundays, you know. He should be one of the premier, premier players. You know, he's been doing it for a long time. He's been doing it for four years, you know, and he's been doing it at a high level for four years. And um, I think I've earned respect throughout the country to be able to say he should be on that next level.